Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to welcome Professor James Davis from Columbia University as the first expert of the week. Jim, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what you brought into Earth Sciences? Uh, uh, thank you, Tomas. I have a physics undergraduate background. Uh, I learned after I came to graduate school that many Earth scientists come to the field from different areas, physics, chemistry, engineering, and mathematics, so I don't think I'm unusual. And to a large extent, I'm still doing physics, but with a focus on the Earth. So I understand you research professor at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Can you tell us a little bit about your institute and in, and in which field of research you're currently involved? Sure. Uh, Lamont, uh, as we call it for short, <laughs> is a large wooded campus uh, located outside New York City with approximately 200 researchers with a, do a doctoral degree, a number of scientists with a master's or bachelor's degree, and around 90 graduate students studying the structure and evolution of all of the Earth systems, uh, that is the solid Earth, Earth, glaciers and ice sheets, oceans and atmosphere. Uh, we even have a small number of planetary scientists here. Uh, Columbia's University, Columbia University's Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, which uh, includes all undergraduate education, is also located at Lamont. And because of all the, all the different types of research here, it's, it's a fairly exciting place to work. Uh, some scientists focus on fundamental questions, like what the Earth's interior is like. Others focus on societal applications, like assessing earthquake hazards or risks due to extreme weather. Uh, my research is in the field of geodesy, the measurement and interpretation of the size, shape, rotation, and gravitational field of the Earth. I specialize in acquiring, analyzing, and interpreting space-based observations. Um, a variety of processes can influence geodetic measurements over a range of spatial and temporal scales, including uh, plate tectonics, sea level change, melting of glaciers and ice sheets, and weather and climate. Wow, that sounds like there are many different topics included. So does this mean that one has to work interdisciplinary in earth sciences in general? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, yes, in almost any field of earth sciences today, uh, one must work across disciplines. On one hand, it's exciting because it means our research never becomes boring. Uh, however, this situation also poses a challenge because we have to constantly learn about these other fields, each of which has its own language, its own way of doing things. Even reading one another's uh, computer files can pose difficulties. So given that, what would you say are the biggest challenges we face nowadays when one thinks of Earth sciences? Well, there are many different types of Earth observations, uh, many based in satellite systems. Um, each monitors one aspect of the Earth system, which overall is very co complex, and, and it's constantly in flux. Processes in land are monitored, for example, vegetation, soil moisture, deformation of the Earth's crust due to internal forces. Uh, glaciers are monitored for total mass, surface height, flow rates. The oceans monitored for sea surface salinity and sea surface temperature. And of course, the atmosphere is monitored carefully uh, to help predict weather. Combining all these different types of observations to understand the underlying process and interactions is a tremendous challenge that we're facing today. Another challenge is to assure the continuity of our observing systems. It can take a long time to obtain funding for, assemble, and launch a satellite, and we don't want, want to have gaps in the data. A good example is the GRACE satellite mission, which is multinational and led by the U.S. and German space agencies. GRACE stands for Gra Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment. This satellite system orbits Earth and senses the gravity field of the entire Earth. Mostly the gravity field of Earth is constant, but there are small month-to-month -month variations associated with water moving around the surface of the planet. This mission is the first, actually, to monitor the global water cycle. For example, we can measure the wet and less wet seasonal variations in the Amazon rainforest, the seasonal exchange of water between the continents and the oceans, the accelerating loss of glacier mass due to global global warming in Greenland, Antarctica, and other areas, uh, and drying of regions with significant drought, such as California today. Um, if, if the GRACE satellite dies without a new satellite having been launched, we'll be blind to the, into these changes for a time. We're trying very hard to launch a new satellite before GRACE dies, but as I said, it can be a challenge.
So uh, there has been a lot of sensing, measuring. So can you tell our participants why one should sense planet Earth, in fact? Well, Earth today is undergoing massive changes, and it's very important for us to understand them. Uh, it's very rewarding to be involved in such research, which therefore benefits society. As an added benefit, we get to travel the planet to, to perform our experiments. Uh, these are places that I would not ordinarily get to work for long periods. Volcanoes, deserts, rainforests, glaciers, Antarctica, mountains, even ocean cruises. Uh, we use the, use the latest observational computing technologies available, and we get to use satellite systems. So based on this, what would you recommend to a person who wants to know more about Earth observations? Well, the National Space Agencies all have great websites with areas for the public and for, for students. You can also take courses such as this one. Uh, as you prepare for university, you can contact the faculty. They'll discuss with your interests with you so you can know more about courses and career paths that might be of interest to you. There are many opportunities today that involve Earth monitoring. So, considering what Jim said, I hope that I see you next time when we continue sensing planet Earth. Thank you, Jim, for this very, very valuable interview. You're quite welcome, Thomas. Thank you.